Your friends in Christ, many years ago, the rock band The Who had a hit song entitled, Who Are You? And the refrain would say over and over, Who are you? I really want to know. It is a question people ask all the time. I mean, little kids grow up trying to define who they are. They take that question into junior high school, into senior high school, and they might say things like, I am a A student. I'm a musician. I'm a theater person. I'm an athlete. I'm a whatever designation people might use to define who they are. And it doesn't stop when we're in school. We take that question into adulthood, too. We say things even after we've graduated from college. I'm an Aggie, or I'm a Longhorn. And then we also define ourselves with new types of labels. I'm an accountant. I'm an engineer. I'm a teacher. We hold on to these kinds of labels because they meet a basic need that we all have. The need to know who we are. Because knowing who we are says we fit in, we belong. Who are you? That's the question. And today in our gospel lesson, Jesus Christ answers that question for each one of us. Jesus says to you and to me, you are the salt of the earth. That is, you are a person who has been intentionally left here on earth by God himself to preserve life, to defend life. But more than that, Jesus also says, you are the light of the world. You are here, according to God's plan, to shine the light of God's love into the darkness of this world. Now before we go any further in this sermon, let me say, we do not make ourselves salt and light. Nothing you or I do is going to make us those things. Only Jesus can make us salt and light. And according to Jesus, that is what you and I are when we become his followers. We are not salt because we try hard to be salt. If you're not salt to begin with, trying hard is not going to make any difference in your life at all. But if Jesus says that's what you are, guess what? That's what you are. Because regardless of how you feel about being salt and light, Jesus is the one who defines who his people are. We do not. We are who Jesus says we are. When Jesus made you his, he not only saved you from eternal darkness and from eternal death, but he left you here on earth for a time to be about his business, of preserving life, and making it better. And that's what it means to be salt. And that's what Jesus says you are. Someone who preserves, defends, and makes life better. Jesus wants us in this world to keep it from rotting and going bad. But he also says to us, we are the light of the world. We are people who shine the light of God's love into the darkness around us so that other people might see Jesus. That's what it means to be salt and light. I don't know if you've given this much thought, but the truth is you are the answer to a prayer that millions and millions of people pray every week. In the Lord's Prayer, we pray, Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
as the salt of the earth, as the light of the world, we, the followers of Jesus Christ, are the instruments by which Jesus is brought into this world to keep it from going bad. You and I are the vehicles by which Jesus comes into this world as we shine the light of Jesus into the darkness so that the darkness will be dispelled. But if you have followed Jesus for any length of time, you know that's not an easy thing to do, to be salt and to be light. It takes three things. First of all, serving as salt and shining light takes faith. This can be a tough world. There is a lot, a lot of pain and brokenness around us and in us. When you are down, you can only shine the light of God's love and joy if you truly believe that Jesus is greater than your problems. If you believe that you have a small God, and unfortunately a lot of people live life that way, if you believe that you have a small God, then the big trials in life that we all experience are simply too big for a little God to handle. And unfortunately that is why some people who confess Jesus as their Savior fall from faith when a major crisis in life confronts them. Their view of Jesus is too small. Only a person who believes in the biblical sense can rejoice and celebrate life when life turns hard and cold. You see, believing isn't just head knowledge. It's not just about knowing the right answers. Biblical faith is trusting God with your entire life. It is putting your life into the nail-scarred hands of the one who came to give you victory in this life through his suffering, death, and resurrection. And that, my friends, requires faith. If you do not have faith in Christ, you'll never be able to shine your light effectively. You know, it's easy to say you believe. It's easy to say I trust in God when life is blessed and everything is going smoothly. It's quite another thing to say it when life knocks you down, when your dreams don't turn out the way that you had hoped, when you face either your own mortality or the death of a loved one. Serving as salt, shining your light, requires faith in a big God. A God who is ultimately bigger than any problem you will ever face in this life. Serving as salt, shining your light, means having faith. But secondly, serving as salt and shining your light takes Courage. You know, when I was in college, I worked as a security guard. And I'd also often work uh, the 1 a.m. to 6 a.m. shift. And during my rounds, I'd have to go underneath the campus into the tunnels. And at times, it got pretty dark and dank down there. I would turn on my flashlight, and I could see cockroaches scrambling because they didn't like the light. My friends, we live in a world that thrives on darkness. This world often calls black white and white black. It justifies sin and calls those who proclaim God's truth unloving and judgmental. Society, I've observed, will put up with Christians as long as they stay in their place if they keep their mouths shut and ignore the darkness, then you can get along pretty well in this world. The problem, however, is that Jesus hasn't called us to keep our heads down and to keep our mouths shut. 
He calls us to live our faith before the people of this world. Jesus says, you are salt, you are light. So let that light shine so that others may see that God has in reality come into this world to deal with the darkness. The darkness of our sin. That's right, the darkness. Someone's listening. The Gospels tell us that Jesus often met with resistance and even hostility as he would shine his light of love upon people. While there were certainly many who were excited that God had come into their darkness, oftentimes Jesus' presence was met with open hostility. The truth is, lots of people hated Jesus for shining his light of love. Because as the Bible says, they loved darkness instead of light. As it was with Jesus, so it is with us. People don't always want to see what God's light reveals. And so they remain in the darkness. And when we shine God's light of love into the darkness, they will flee from that light. And they will sometimes even fight against that light. That's why it takes courage to serve as salt. It takes courage to shine your light before others. But finally, serving as salt and shining your light takes commitment. You know, nothing is easier than quitting. I'm just curious. How many of you made New Year's resolutions this year? Come on, be honest. Some of you. How many of you are still following through on your commitments? You know, it's easy to say we're going to do this or that. It's another thing to follow through. It's so easy to quit. And nothing is easier than giving up when living for Jesus gets tough. Serving as salt, shining your light, means being committed. It means following God's plan for your life with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your mind. And it's this kind of passion that God gives us through our relationship with Jesus Christ. God gives you the strength to do what you need to do. And God will never ask you to do something that he will not give you the power to accomplish it. You see, our commitment to serve as salt and to shine as light comes from God's commitment to us. The reality is, if you are a child of God, if you are a believer in Jesus Christ, if you are a follower of the Lord, He has touched your life with His mercy. He has touched your heart with His forgiveness. He has touched your sin-darkened soul with the light of His love. Jesus has made you his dearly loved and forgiven child. We have hope. We have future because God chose to shine his light of love upon us and he would not stop because he was fully committed to making you his own. And because God has shown his light of love upon you, you now have the privilege of reflecting that light into the darkness so that others might see Jesus. That's who you are. Because that's who Jesus, the creator, says you are. Today, Jesus reminds us of our identity and what we are here on earth to do. And he reminds us that he's the one who gives us the power to do it. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. So may Jesus continue to empower you to make the most of the opportunities that he provides each and every day. 
for you to do your good works before people. Not that you would be glorified, but that God would be glorified because they would know that God has broken into this world through his body, the church, and that he is still a God who loves and forgives and casts out darkness. God bless you as you serve as salt and shine your light to the glory of our Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.